Hope you're all having a good day today. Today we're going to be looking at how to find and plot alpha on the security market line. For those of you who have taken first year introductory finance, you would know that you would know all about CAPM, capital asset pricing model. For those of you who don't know, I'll summarize. Risk-free rate is similar to, it, it, it's really just an asset that has a guaranteed return. So this could be a savings account interest rate, or it can be something like a 10-year treasury bond. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be using 2.5% as my risk-free rate. Eta is the sensitivity to a market. Now, in earlier years in finance courses, you will probably be given this all the time, but in practice, you don't get given this. You have to find it. And more likely in further finance courses, you're going to have to find it yourself. So this is the formula we use. And then RM, return the market, and then risk-free rate again. And this formula right here, it gives us the return on asset A or whatever the asset is that you're trying to find. So for the security market line, this, this is the information we need. We need the beta, capital asset pricing model return, and the actual return. And we're going to need it for the five stocks plus risk-free rate. So what I've done here is I've got five stocks plus a market index. And you can get this information from Yahoo Finance, whatever you like. So the first step is to find the return of these. Now, I personally am going to use logarithmic returns. It, you may have learned uh, the typical T1 minus T0 over T0 return, but in practice, asset managers tend to use logarithmic returns. So that's what I'm going to do today. So it's going to be equal line, market index, uh, market index price over market index period before. Close bracket. These are our returns. Let's put it, make it go all the way down. And these are our returns. So now we have the returns for each stock plus the market index. Uh, then we're going to want to put it into our table, our little table here. So our annual return equals average. That's not average, it equals average. And let's go to market index. That didn't work quite well. The average of the market index's returns times 252. Why do we times by 252? It's because there's 252 uh, trading days in a year. So that's our annual return. We'll apply it to all of them. You can do it individually or you can use shortcuts either way. So we've got that. Now we're going to want to put it into our little summary table here that we're going to use to make the graph. So we're going to paste it here, paste values. And then we're going to copy it again. And then we're going to transpose it, which is this one. Whoops, I don't need the market index. Paste and transpose. Cool. Yes, the formatting goes gross, whatever. Doesn't matter. Next, what we have to do, and this is something that a lot of people don't know how to do, but I'm going to teach you. Uh, we're going to find beta of each asset. So the beta of the market index is obviously one. It's the market. It, the systematic risk, you're not compensated for what the market's giving you. So yeah. But we still have to find the beta of stock one, stock two, stock three, stock four, stock five. And then we're going to do that by going, we're going to make a covariance matrix. So we're going to go into, let's see, data, data analysis, and we're going to find covariance. And then our input range is going to be the market index, so stock five, and all of the returns. And then we're going to want to Put the output range. We're going to want it here. We don't want a new worksheet. We'll be able to easily reference it. Uh, Non-numerical data. Oh. And include labels in the first row. So here's our covariance matrix. Okay, well, we're looking at this formula right here. And then on this top, the top part right here, it says the covariance between stock one and the market. So we're going to go stock one divided by the variance of the market, which is just this. And it's a percent, we'll change that later. And then we're going to do the same for each one. So stock two divided by market index. Stock three divided by market index. Stock four divided by market index. And stock five divided by market index. Then we're going to place all these. Make them general. And that's the beta for each asset. So now, it's pretty easy, we can just find CAPM, right? So, so what we're actually going to do is use this formula here 
to calculate the expected return of each of these assets. So, return of stock one equals the risk free rate, which is up here, 2.5%, or what you can use whatever uh, 10 year government bond rate is in your country. Um, and then we're going to times by beta, then times by the return of the market, which is here, minus the risk free rate, which is here, close back. So we're going to want to lock the market index. We're going to want to lock the risk free rate and boom. There we go. This should be our returns. Let's double check. Cap and return 2.5, market index and beta. Yep. Now that we have each one of the cap and expected returns, we can copy this down. Same way as we did before. Uh, paste the values and then copy it and paste it into Capham's return and transpose. We actually have all the data needed now, so I can just copy over beta, put it down here, paste values, copy, paste, transpose. This is all the data we actually need for our security market line. If we want to find alpha now, we can simply go alpha. That's not nice for alpha. Alpha equals the actual return minus cap and return, and these are our alphas. Now we're going to plot the security market line. So at first, you're going to want to highlight over the beta and the cap and returns, and you're going to want to go to insert, scatter plot, and this. As you can see, there is a straight line here. This is the slope of our security market line. We're going to want to add trend line linear. As you can see, it's much more visible now. To make it a bit better for you, I'm gonna put it into this, just so it's more visible. So now you actually wanna be able to see the alpha and how a manager has outperformed the security market line. So we just transfer, the, we just slide this over here and it becomes much more visually appealing. You can see how the manager has performed against the security market line. As you can see here, he performed really well. Here he performed well, here not so well. Here, not so well. Now that we have the security market line looking nice, we're going to click on the trend line. We're going to right click, format trend line, go into whatever series it is, and then you're going to click on the paint bucket marker, and we are going to remove these dots. As you can see, it makes it look much more appealing. And that is how we find the security market line.